The U.S. Space Agency confirmed yesterday that its renowned Kepler telescope is beyond repair, a big blow in its search for planets. The Kepler was launched into an orbit around the sun in 2009. Its purpose? Observe stars thousands of light years from Earth that may harbor Earth-like planets. By looking at what happens to the light emanated by the stars, it's discovered more than 3,500 possible planets, more than 100 of which have been independently confirmed. But it has not yet found one planet that has the right conditions for sustaining life as here on Earth. NASA says the spacecraft's wheels, which are critical for keeping it pointed correctly, do not work anymore. Astronomers are now assessing its legacy. Michael Lemonick is the author of a book about Kepler called Mirror Earth. He's long written about space and science for Time magazine. Michael Lemonick, welcome to the News Hour. Tell us a little bit more about what the original mission for the Kepler was. Uh, the original mission was to take a census, really, of a group of stars, uh, an average group of stars, to find out what percentage of them have planets of any kind and what sizes those planets come in and how far they are from their stars, how, how uh, the temperature on the surface of those planets uh, would be if you were there. And, and why is that important? And, and how much of that mission did it get done? It got, well, first of all, it got a huge amount done. The, it's important because when, the reason we look for planets around other stars at all is because we're interested in whether there's life elsewhere in the universe. And the best bet for life, uh, we would think, would be on a planet just like Earth, that is, about the same size as Earth, orbiting a star like the Sun, uh, with the right temperature for water to exist in liquid form, which is a, a requirement for life, we think. And since we know there's a planet like that already in the universe and life is here, we want to look for a planet like that elsewhere as the best bet for finding life. And so what happened to the telescope? We mentioned the wheels not working. What, was this something they expected would go wrong? Well, th so, so these wheels help the telescope point very precisely at the stars it's looking at. You have to hold the, the telescope very steady in order to de detect the very faint fluctuations in light that happen when a planet goes in front of the star. So it dims just a tiny bit. Um, and the wheels help keep it pointed incredibly precisely. And they've had four of these reaction wheels um, that the, the satellite went up with. One of them failed last year. Another one failed last spring. And with only two wheels still working, you can't point with the accuracy that you need. And so the telescope is still in perfect working order. It just can't aim in the direction that it's supposed to. Michael Lemonick, it must be incredibly frustrating to the NASA scientists who put so much effort into this. How are they taking this? Well, they're actually taking it pretty well. When Kepler was first approved in 2000, it was approved for a four-year mission. That's what the scientists asked for. NASA said, yes, you'll, you can have four years. And they've completed the four years. In 2012, the scientists said, well, we could do even better science if we had another uh, several years, and, and they got another three and a half. But the first primary phase of the mission has been completed, and only the first two years' worth of data from those four years have been analyzed yet. And those numbers you quoted in the introduction, uh, all those planets it's found already, that's just from the first two years of data. So they've got two more years' worth to probe through, many more discoveries to make. Um, all, there, all that's uh, lacking is the ability to then go even deeper and look even further. So, so they're disappointed, of course. Uh, they would have liked to do more with this amazing satellite, but they're incredibly satisfied with what they found already. But in terms of adding to our understanding of space, uh, you're saying this is significant. This is very significant. Um, what they've done in this survey is discovered what they're convinced are more than 3,000 planets. They haven't all been confirmed yet, but most of them will be. And what they see is that if you look out uh, around average stars, you will see some planets like Jupiter, big, gassy, giant planets that would be very inhospitable to life. Um, more smaller planets like Neptune, still not very hospitable. But as you get smaller and smaller and closer to Earth in size, uh, there are more and more planets. And if they extrapolate from what they've seen, uh, one estimate, one low ball estimate, is that in the Milky Way there would be 17 billion planets 
with just the right conditions for life. And that's a low estimate. There are probably more than that. So it's, we didn't know any of this before Kepler. Um, now we know that Earth-like planets are almost certainly very common in the Milky Way. 15 years ago, we didn't even know there were planets at all around other stars. Now we know that Earths are very common in the Milky Way. And, and what do they believe it's going to take to find out where those other Earths are? Well, so, so Kepler's primary mission is often misunderstood. It wasn't specifically to find those planets in particular. It was to get an idea of how common they are. That's the basic mission. So if it found that Earth-like planets are very rare, that tells astronomers, OK, maybe it's not worth going out now and trying to find specific ones. What it's found instead is that Earth-like planets are probably very common. There are probably plenty of them reasonably close to us. And now we can start targeting, with new telescopes, targeting stars closer to Earth than the Kepler stars, which are quite far away, looking for those planets. And ultimately, with more powerful telescopes, looking at their atmospheres and their surfaces to try and determine whether there's really life there. Because you know, it's one thing to say, yes, this is a good place where life could exist. We want to be able to say, yes, life does exist on these planets. And that is now not a crazy thing to try and do, thanks to Kepler. We now know it's, it's not a, a quixotic um, endeavor. Well, that is uh, pretty exciting. Michael Lemonick, thank you very much. I think so. Thank you.